we're going to talk about emphasis and really what we're doing is building on a lot of the same kinds of visual weight conversations that we were having when we were talking about balance. So in this case, instead of trying to choreograph your space so that you have a nice, interesting distribution of visual weight across the picture plane and wind up with a unified and balanced composition, what we're going to do instead is think about how to control the visual weight and get the viewer to look in the right spot. Really though, on the basics, it works the same. Things that you notice, like you got to keep an eye on the one that's going to explode, or you got to keep an eye on the one that's all by itself, are going to stand out. So things that you notice because they have some sort of contrast, that contrast could be as simple as the shape. Although here they're cheating a little bit too because when they are letting this one take up this much space, that square actually has more value contrast as well because it's surrounded by a larger area of white. Building on some of the things that we talked about when we were talking about gestalt, anything that is a little bit more complex is going to have greater visual weight. So the textured square up at the top is going to have more visual weight than the solid square. And this relies on the same your brain fills in the pattern idea that we were talking about with gestalt. Essentially, you can glance at the square, understand that it's a square, and move on. Whereas the one that's textured, or if it were a more complex shape, like a weird spiky amoeba or something like that, would hold more of your attention because it takes your brain just a split second longer to figure it out. Moving over here, yes, the, re the large one has more visual weight, mostly because it's large, although again, they are cheating because they also put the ch large one up at the top where it looks like it's defying gravity and is about to fall and squish the little one! Run, little one, run! Yeah, you thought you were going to escape that. Most of the time, though, we're looking at images that are much more complex. And so when we see the one all the way on the right at the top here, we've got a couple of different things that we could look at. An initial glance might make you think that the giant gray circle is the thing that would have the most visual weight. But even though it's giant and it's gray and therefore different than all the other things that are in this composition, it's overlapped in such a way that we probably don't need to think about it right now. The analogy I like to use with this particular image is essentially that Indiana Jones has to get past all the flying darts before he worries about the big gray boulder. So we're not going to worry about the big gray boulder. There is a certain amount of subjectivity, though, in terms of what's going to have the most visual weight. For most of us, it's going to be the textured thing because it's A, textured, and B, on top. Some people, though, are going to come over and look at the high contrast of this one, cur one rectilinear form all by itself, especially where it's surrounded by so much white. Most of us are going to be over here. Some of us might be over here. And even when we're over here, some of us are going to be looking at it right there. Some of us are going to drop down to the bottom. Some people are going to look at the top. The top people are mostly freaks, though, so you don't have to worry about those. So let's just say that most of us are going to be up here in the uh, rectilinear where it's intersecting with the curve area. The point here is that we have to balance conflicting things with visual weight, and that's one of the reasons why we want to actually look at artwork. Now, to actually look at artwork, we're going to start with a clip from a movie. We're going to look at a brief moment of Schindler's List, one of the few instances wherein they actually use color in the film. Before we talk about it, I want you to go ahead and exit out of this little talk and watch the video clip that is part of this module. You're looking for the one that says Spielberg Schindler's List. Then we're going to pick it up in the next little video from me, and we'll talk about how I'm evil because I made you watch a really sad thing that's all about the Holocaust. It's going to not be fun at all, actually. <laughs> 